you have built your nice web application and now you need a search box like the ones from Facebook or Tumblr with the fancy image on the left, the text and the description. Well, actually, it's pretty simple. Let me tell you how it's done. All right, we are starting with a simple input control, uh, just a text box like this one. And um, you can see it here. Input is just a text field. ID search box. I changed the styles a bit because I think when you've already built your web application, you already have your own style, uh, so there's not much to it. Of course, you can pause the video and copy this, the styles uh, to change the input box. Okay, the next thing already is the library we are going to use, and this is jQuery UI. You can download it on jQueryUI.com, just use the stable version, or you could also use the custom download and just check the autocomplete because this is the function we are going to use in this tutorial. Download it and if this is done you will need three files actually which is the jQueryUI CSS file and the JS file. You can use the minified version or not, it's up to you. Add it to the project and of course the the whole base for this is jQuery also added to the project and then we are going to link it like this jQuery and jQuery UI now we have the library now we will add a JavaScript file by ourselves because we actually have to write some JavaScript to make this work we start off with the default document ready, just for this tutorial. <clears throat> and what I like to do is just check if anything, if everything works. Of course, I have to link the file. Yeah, that's okay. Open the console with F12 reload and yes it works great and now everything is ready for the actual autocomplete box so go to your JavaScript file and we could already start by saying give me the actual search box and add an autocomplete now the thing with this is you actually need some data because, uh, well, what are you going to, st to look for? So, in the usual case, you would just call any web servers to get your data, which will be an array of any complex objects. But in this case, I would just create an array locally to keep things simple. And I want to look for some contacts and I like superhero movies and comics and that's why I'm going to use some superheroes. So an object could look like that. We have a first name of a superhero like Peter. We have a last name like Parker and the hero name maybe you already know it course that's Spider-Man and what I also want to display is the image URL I've prepared the images so I need a new folder and the images are here so you've now seen which heroes we are going to use and would I would just skip that and create the array Okay, now we have the actual data and this is something we can actually now use in the autocomplete. The autocomplete comes with a bunch of different options. We will just use some of them and the first one would be contact uh, source, which will be the contacts in this case. The next one would be the minimum length you have to enter before the jQuery UI library search for any object. So maybe you want to use uh, five because of performance reasons or anything else. Maybe you have a thousand of different objects 
and uh, the user has to enter five characters before jQuery looks them up. Uh, but in this case, we just use zero. And the other two we are going to use are focus and select, but I will explain them later. So far, I can just say these are functions which return alt. The same goes for select. Okay, and now we can start off with the actual magic behind the jQuery UI autocomplete and the way how you're going to style your rendered item, your displayed item. And this goes like this. We have to define a render item and give it a function. And this function takes a UL element and the actual item, which is the same as your object in the array. And for simplicity reasons, I would just create a list element like that. But you can, it's up to you how you are going to create your elements. There are many ways in jQuery. And I would just say that the content of this list element is the first name of our item, which is the contact, and the last name. Okay, then I have to append this list item to the UL. and then return it. Okay, we have added the autocomplete to the search box and then we told jQuery how to display any item of our array. Let's check that. I just hit the down arrow key on my keyboard and you see I have all the contacts and an error down here, but this is something we will change soon. Okay, actually we have all the contexts, but if I enter just one name, like Peter, or even just the two, these two characters, nothing happens. Well, you might ask, why is that so? Because it does not really work like you want it to work. The thing with a jQuery autocomplete is that it takes the text you entered in your input control and compares it with one member of all the objects in your data and this member is called value. So it's the same situation if you have here another member which is called value and then there's something there um, but maybe your objects from your web service are not structured that way, you don't have this member and that's why I just added in JavaScript. So cr let's create a for loop and go through the whole array. And let's just add a value member which is for example the first name of the contacts. And now I could just say enter Peter and I just get Peter. But the problem is, for example, Tony, if I enter the last name, nothing happens. So we could just use a simple trick for that and do a little string concatenation. So for example, I could just enter the, the last name I could also use something like that if a user enters the first and the last name with a space in between and maybe even use the hero name. And now if you do it that way I could just enter the Hulk and get Bruce Banner for example. So now we got this out of our way. Um, 
in essence that's everything to it. Now the real work starts by changing how the items are displayed and this is the fancy stuff you see in Facebook or Tumblr. So to make this video a little shorter I have prepared this already. Um, I'll just copy and paste it and then I will explain what I've done. So again completely up to you how you do this but in this case I have several diffs I start with an li with a list element then an outer diff where the image is put in an image diff and then the actual image is put into this diff and then on the right side of that I have another diff where I display the first name the last name and the hero name everything has its own class but let's see how it looks when I don't add the CSS. Well, as you can see, I get the results and it actually works, but it just doesn't look right. So let's copy and paste the CSS. Okay, it's not much, really. So, the first things I want to get out of my way are these two. These two classes are actually from jQuery UI and we just use them to override the default settings and that's why I added the important because it doesn't matter where you link to the CSS of jQuery UI, this is the style which is going to be used. So we will change the background of the default menu item and when an item is on focus, so it's currently selected, actually it gets another background color, another border color and margin. And when you do it this way, the actual error you see here in the console is also gone. Okay, that's for jQuery UI. The next is the search item, the actual search item. You can see it here. It's the li. Got a fixed height, a padding, background color, and uh, text alignment. And then we have these two here, which are the contact image and the contact image diff, which you can see here the diff for the image and then the actual image. And this just tells you that it gets a fixed height, 50 height and 50 width, and um, that any overflowing image is hidden. That's why I put the, the height of the actual image to a fixed 50 pixels, so I won't lose much of the image if it doesn't fit there and the aspect ratio is not correct. An alignment, the float left, and the last thing would be the name diff which just gets an inline block for the display and a nice padding. And the name diff is actually here. Well, that's it actually. Now let's see how this looks. Great, we already have our stylings. Awesome. Okay, that's for the style. And now there are only two things left to do which are these two options. Okay, first the focus. When I remove this one and I go through my array, you will see that you actually see the value of your object in the input control. Maybe you don't want to have it this way and that's why I return false. This way you can just see the text you entered or you could say well I want to display the hero name so you can change that of course by setting the value of the actual item hero name okay and now we go through the array and we see the hero name and the last thing to do is when you hit enter for example maybe you want to open another page so 
again you can enter something in this function and let's just say I want to jump to the image of the hero um, and this would work like that image URL reload the page choose Tony Stark and we are done here that's it you see you can type in any name it gets filtered and you can go through the array hit enter and see your hero if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and uh, yeah that's everything you need to know actually for jQuery UI and an autocomplete Thanks for watching this video, I hope it was a solution to your problem. If so, please click the like button and if you need more tutorials, just subscribe to my channel. Thank you and good luck with your next code project.